a nostalgia critic, guy. Remember it so you don't have to. Let's talk about Donny Brasco. That's right, some of Johnny Depp's and Al Pacino's greatest performances. Is that a bunny? I don't, I don't remember a bunny in Donny Brasco. Oh shit, did I order Donny Darko instead? You certainly did, and let me tell you why it's the greatest movie ever made. That's a lot of crap. Let me tell you why this is the most overhyped, pretentious bull tuchus that ever existed. Nope, I'm not doing this. What, why not? Yeah, why not? Because Donny Darko has two very polarizing audiences. One side says it's one of the most mind-blowing movies ever made, and the other side says it's the equivalent of American Pie trying to be... American Pie. People love to talk about whether or not this is a game-changer or just an excuse for artsy kids to say, you just don't get it. As if we needed more excuses for that! Yeah, if I don't understand that that means it sucks. Like that movie Eraserhead. He was never once at the end of a pencil! Yeah, that's the thing. I don't care what the fan bases say. I just want to give my own take. Really? So you dress up as fan bases in a video just to say you're not going to reference us? Ironically referencing us? I don't even know what your fan base is like. I have no idea if that's the shit you'd wear. I have no idea if that's the kind of stuff you would say. And frankly, I don't care. I know there's a lot of opinions and theories about this movie, and you're welcome to them. I'm just saying I'm going to give my report on it. No one else's. Just seems like a lot of extra editing simply to say you don't care. You have to take time to find these clothes and change into them? Just leave me alone! Fine, I'm going to write a million theories as to what this opening meant. Yeah, and I'm gonna punch a football. I don't know, whatever my fan base does. <sighs> Let's take a look at the film that launched a million blog posts. This is Donnie Darko. The film opens with a boy knocked out, having apparently tripped on his bike. Ah, the mountains of Minnesota. He gets back on and rides on home to his slow motion family. The killing moon. It ends with a spider and they all bang the girl. Happy reading. I know over readers are already having a field day with this, but honestly, I'm just wondering what production assistant put that Care Bear sticker there. Yeah, figure out the symbolism behind that one, artist! It's all secretly the origin to Swift Heart Rabbit. And I'm not gonna lie, this might be one of my favorite, most random opening lines to a movie. I'm voting for Dukakis. I just want to help John Lovett's career. Maybe when you have children of your own. I'm not gonna squeeze one out until I'm like 30. So you know, in a year. That's Maggie Gyllenhaal as Elizabeth and Jake Gyllenhaal as Donnie, playing the incredibly stretching roles of brother and sister. And it wouldn't be an early 2000s movie without DeVay Chase. When can I squeeze one out? Not until eighth grade. Excuse me. She'll be well in a well by then! Maybe you should be the one in therapy, then mom and dad can pay someone $200 an hour to listen to all your you thoughts. Want to tell mom and dad why you stopped taking your medication? My teacher said this was called shoddy exposition. Your teacher's a commie, honey. Donnie's mother tries to come in to make him feel better, but his awkward acting continues to rebel. I don't recognize this person today. Then why don't you start taking the goddamn pills? Bitch. Fun fact, Tommy was so actually rehearsed that line with him. Bitch. Bitch. Her son just called me a bitch. Not well, but he did. Actually, in all fairness, most of the acting in this movie is pretty good. As Donnie goes back to taking his medication again, and sure, I guess this is as good a time as any for the date. I've been watching you. A voice seems to call to Donnie as he walks outside and encounters DC cinematic reboot of Bugs Bunny. 28 days, 6 hours, 42 minutes, 12 seconds. You know, the rain girl's inside. You shouldn't steal her shtick. Elizabeth comes home late, but it turns out she's right in time for shitting her pants. <laughs> when will Admiral Boom announce his cannon fire? Fire! And because we're artsy, we can just stop the scene right here. Son? Son? Ben, what are you doing? Donnie wakes up on a golf course with the end of the world written on his arm. Wow, that sounds like the opening lyric to a Don McLean song. So, uh, let's stay off the links at night, okay? And pay no attention to how Patrick Swayze never got rid of his heavenly glow from Ghost. <laughs> Donnie goes home and finds part of an airplane crashed right into his room, but the rest of the plane is nowhere to be found. This makes the family kind of celebrities as all the kids talk with them and even share smokes with them. What happens if you tell mom and dad about this, Sam? They'll put Ariel in the garbage disposal. Well, that name's just a conflict of interest, seeing how we know what her pet dog did to Ariel. Really? I've a spirited away in a rat's joke left after that, I'm done. Hey, I didn't know David Blaine went to this school. 
she's just angry because she got voted most likely to be thrown under a bus. Wait a minute, this is an early 2000s movie. Random slow motion to fast motion edit. Please. It was a weird time when editing like your toes controlled the remote was artsy. Here I thought Happy Death Day had the weirdest goddamn mascot, but Pug McMahon nipples here wins this round. It was as though this plan had been with him all his life. Drew Barrymore plays random casting choice number 20 as Donnie's teacher. Though to her credit, she did help produce this movie, so it's only fitting she plays a role mocking kids about missing the point of her story. Why did the children break into Old Misery's house? They wanted to rob him. Joni, if you had actually read the short story, which had a whopping 13 <laughs> pages, would have kept you up all night, you would know that the children find a great deal of money. Yeah, I remember how many kids were made fun of by bullies when they didn't do their homework. Yet still raised their hand, even though they didn't do the assignment? Donnie Darko? I have no question. I just wanted to say your name. It sounds cool. I just registered, and they put me in the wrong English class. You look like you belong here. Can't even think of a joke for that. That's just weird. Where do I sit? Sit next to the boy you think is the cutest. <gasps> Quiet! Only I may appreciate my childish remarks. Oh, and the teacher's not joking either. She means it, as the girl eyes the boys checking her out, and some of the girls? <laughs> Joni, get up. fired for her abuse of power. Oh, I mean, uh, she's edgy. On the way back, Donnie comes across an old lady who's roaming the streets and constantly checking this one mailbox. She seems to, however, whisper something in his ear. Well, what'd she say to you? She kept Masters of the Universe off her resume. Donnie also apparently sees a therapist. I met a new friend. Real or imaginary? She asked that like he was choosing between sparkling water and distilled. Imaginary. He seemed a little too okay with that answer. You know, I think the show did some damage. At a school, they watch a video about controlling your fear. You know, that class. As Donnie has another vision that night. Well, now we know what happens when Camille Del Toro does a Nesquik commercial. My God, is this ever going to stop? The next day, it's reported that school is let out due to a busted water main and general douchebaggery. But it looks like someone's hitting on Donnie's maybe baby. Has anyone ever told you that you're sexy? I like your boobs. I'd say that line is terribly written, but coming from a young Seth Rogen, I believe he say that. Do you want to walk me home? Sure. I'll admit I was torn which bird sound effect to put there, so I'll just play them all. So he walks her home and they make awkward small talk. Donnie Darko. What the hell kind of name is that? It's like some sort of superhero or something. What makes you think I'm not? I read comics. I know Mysterio's the bad guy. So that's enough for relationship material as they decide to go out. Afterwards, his therapist recommends hypnosis. She asks about his imaginary rabbit friend, apparently named Frank. I I'd like to hear about your friend Frank. Oh, he looks so much like Lola Bunny. Human tits! I love human tits! The teachers ask everyone in the school to show their penmanship to see if they can find out who graffitied and vandalized the school. Never questioning, couldn't the vandal just fake the handwriting? Donald Darko. Okay, tell me I'm not the only one who thought of this when they heard that. Donald Darko. But damn it, movie, let's get to what really matters. Smurfette fucks all the other Smurfs. Why do you think Papa Smurf made her? Papa Smurf didn't create Smurfette. Gargamel did. She was sent in as Gargamel's evil spy. Your Smurfology is light years beyond my Fraggle studies. He gets another visit from Francis Bacon's Roger Rabbit, who says he's a time traveler. But his little sister interrupts. Who are you talking to? I was just taking my pills, Sam. Whatever. Can you drive me to swim class? In a pool that's filled with rats? I'm sorry, I made a promise and I panicked! Donnie returns to school where they teach everything falls into two categories, fear or love. Seriously, what class is this? And big shock, some of the students think this is kind of stupid. Just place an X on the lifeline in the appropriate place. You can't just lump everything into these two categories and then just deny everything else. Be like this movie, which only has awkward and confusing. He gets in trouble for talking back to his teacher, but he still returns back to school to talk to another teacher about what is known about time travel. 
The teacher gives him a book that it turns out was written by that crazy lady roaming the streets. Later, the therapist asks what that woman whispered to him. Donnie, what did Roberta Sparrow say to you? She said that every living creature on Earth dies alone. Especially those who do Fortnite dance memes, they really die alone. He sits with his dad and friends watching the world's clearest 80s TV when James Cameron suddenly takes over directing. <laughs> so this is what happens when you eat Lunchables a day after they expire. So the fucking bubbles lead him to a closet where he finds a gun. I guess that's fitting, seeing how we're shortly followed by a character we'd all love to shoot. There's entirely too many young men and women today. They surrender their bodies to the temptation and destruction of drugs, alcohol, and premarital sex. How much are they paying you to be here? Uh, excuse me? A cynical high school student? I was so not prepared for this! Are you telling us this stuff so we can buy your book? Because I gotta tell you, if you are, that was some of the worst advice I ever heard. Right? This yeah. is an anger Remove prisoner. Him. Well, as principal, I clearly have no control over this. Are there any movie schools that aren't run by dumbasses? The parents are shocked, but the students cheer! Whatever this was supposed to be! As he hangs out where all media thinks young people hang out. On living room furniture outside. I haven't seen stuff. Like a lot of really messed up stuff. Before we have an actual conversation, let's cut away, because no scene in this movie lasts over two minutes. Well, each vessel travels along a vector. Yeah, it's kind of like cafeteria line editing. Got what you need? Next. Got what you need? Next. Got what you need? Next. Because of this, the pacing always feels a little off. It's less like a movie and more like Mario just jumping from level to level. Except instead of going from the Mushroom Kingdom to underwater, it's philosophy class to science class. Well, if God controls time, then all time's predecided. He talks about the past being like traveling through God's channel, but the teacher says he has to stop talking about it. I'm not going to be able to continue this conversation. Why? I could lose my job. Oh no, tell me this is not a setup for God's Not Dead 4. If your argument's so clear, why are there so many movies about it? So Donnie, here's a surprise, mopes around for a while until he comes up with an idea with his girlfriend for a project to sell a life-changing product. These are glasses an infant can wear while sleeping that projects peaceful images. And did you stop and think that maybe infants need darkness? That maybe darkness is part of their natural development? Boy, are you gonna like the next few decades. What if the parents, like, put in pictures of Satan? Is that what you'd show your kids? Didn't your dad, like, stab your mom? <laughs> Might I add to my totally realistic teen dialogue, I like your boobs. The teacher waits a kind 10 seconds before finally stopping them. Get out. No, wait, I want to see where this goes. As it scars her so much, it gets Donnie to first base. Time to follow that up with the hottest of all date movies, Evil Dead. Hey, that reminds me, if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? But we see who Donnie's really on a date with, and damn, she fell asleep in the first five minutes of the movie? I thought For the Love of the Game was the only Sam Raimi film that could do that. Why are you wearing that stupid bunny suit? Why are you wearing that stupid man suit? Spoken like a true furry. He takes off his mask to reveal he's really... some guy. And he turns the movie screen into a portal. Burn to the ground. Toad Hall has had its last car show. So like any good boyfriend, he leaves his date behind and tries to figure out a way to burn down the house of a motivational speaker. Ooh, you get to choose which title is more symbolic! I'm still trying to figure out the Care Bear. Meanwhile, at the school, we see a production going on of the timeless classic, overly blatant teacher commentary. Failure is not an option. And Bethany, if you feel the need to vomit up there, just swallow it. Thank God our schools aren't PC or Sue happy, or else we wouldn't be able to have this totally realistic scene! You're off the stage, Rita! <laughs> oh, those jocks. At dance recitals. Donnie's little sister performs with her group the Dieter Faces as he starts burning down the speaker's home. Ooh, he has a painting of Sean Penn and Sylvester Stallone, and somehow it's the exact same picture! 
And oh, yeah, his girlfriend slept throughout the whole movie. Damn, those famously comfortable old theater seats. The fire reveals, though, that the speaker had a kiddie porn dungeon. And yes, those are the exact words the news anchor uses. What has been referred to as a kiddie porn dungeon. And is arrested the following day. Dad played golf with that guy. When he said his balls weren't clean, I didn't... Meanwhile, Barrymore is getting fired from her job. Probably because she's an awful teacher. We don't think the methods you've undertaken here are appropriate. What exactly about my methods do you find inappropriate? Okay, we saw two minutes of your teaching. It was like putting a fire me sign on your back. And we are losing them to apathy, prescribed nonsense. They are slipping away. Why can't you just judge them on entry and force them to sit where their hormones desire? She takes the news pretty well. Ah! This is why you're fired. However, the teacher defending the pedophile can stay. Figure that one out. It's obviously some kind of conspiracy to destroy an innocent man. She asked Donnie's mother to drive the girls to the dance competition, and as one no cartoony this character is, I do admit I get a laugh out of this line. Sometimes I doubt your commitment to sparkle motion. <laughs> With all the obsessing over Donnie Darko, how has this line not been turned into a bigger deal? Oh, it has. Like, a lot. I apologize, Internet. I should not have doubted you on this. Meanwhile, Barrymore exits her job gracefully. Nice. While Donnie, I guess, tries to do something kind. I promise that one day, everything's gonna be better for you. Shut up! Well, that was unexpected. Totally justified, but unexpected. He undergoes hypnosis again and admits to burning down the speaker's house and also admitting that the bunny told him to do it. How could I say that sentence without this being a comedy? I can see it right now! <laughs> what, he turned into a California raisin there? What was up with the stop motion movement? <laughs> uh, human tits! With their parents out of town, Donnie and Elizabeth throw a Halloween party, but Donnie's girlfriend shows up saying her mom's gone. Call the cops. Yeah, they said I should leave the house and that I should go to a safe place. Don't listen to her, man. She fell asleep during Evil Dead. She is not to be trusted! I guess some people are just born with tragedy in their blood. Okay, the proper reaction to have being kissed on that line is the same Jenna Fisher had in Blades of Glory. But his Donnie sense is going wild as Liquidator Schlong leads the way once more. That's the twist. He was an anime character the whole time. I bet this is a spinoff. The boy who left through time. Where are we I gotta get out here before someone makes a meme out of that scene I just did. Oh god, it's too late. He feels like he's running out of time, but suddenly the bullies from before show up, threatening their lives. Guess I. Missed the part where they went from name-calling to multiple homicide. Boy, that escalated quickly. You're dead! <laughs> Get the hell out of here now! Yeah, great. Wear pantyhose so nobody can recognize you and then take him off to tell a witness to go away. You're the kind of idiots who would rob your own house. A car steers off the road, distracted by the roaming old lady, and ends up hitting the girlfriend. Donnie feels terrible because he actually put a letter in the mailbox that the old lady was getting, and it looks like the driver is, guess who, Demonic Thumper. What are you guys doing in the middle of the road, huh? What are you thinking? You're like my dad flying over the wrong crop. Wait, I have another Independence Day joke. Okay, so you can kind of see where this is going. Emphasis on kinda. As Donnie gets up the next morning and sees the sky is one big clogged toilet. The sky potty takes the engine of his mother and sister's flight back in time and seemingly himself as well. Placing him back in his room when the engine crashes, thus killing him. Get it? Trust me, it's okay if you don't. What happened? A smush by Jet Engine. What was his name? Donnie Darko. No, really, what was his name? The girl waves, the mother waves, the little boy waves. And everyone sighs that at least it made more sense than the Langoliers. So there you go, Donnie Darko, hokey and awkward or strange and insightful? <laughs> yes. For me, there's two sides constantly in battle with each other. One is the actual story and characters. Most of them are either unrealistic, random, boring, over the top, or distractingly silly. The story as well just jumps from scene to scene, never really feeling like an organic flowing narrative. 
I guess you could argue that's part of the idea, but it comes across less like planned chaos and more like clumsy filmmaking. The other side, though, are the concepts and ideas. The film gives you enough pieces of philosophy, science, and surreal imagery, but still leaves it vague enough that you can put the pieces together however you want. There's certainly elements of classic science fiction and psychology. You could even argue a lot of religious martyrism. So on the one hand, it is very thought-provoking and can open up interesting points of view on various ways people can be lost while thinking they're found. The only openly lost character seems to be the link to all these people, ideas, and even science that all seem to be very solid in belief but compromised in practice. But you have to get through characters that don't always talk how people talk or do what people do. Were they intended to be that way? Possibly. But that can not only be hugely distracting, it can also be very unrelatable, which I think we're supposed to, in some way or another, relate to these characters. So it's tricky. I recommend it for the seeds of ideas it grows in one's mind and the somewhat abstract way they present them. But I do so with the understanding that you're gonna get some clumsy moments that don't always add up. So I guess I like it when it's not supposed to make sense and dislike it when it's supposed to make sense. A weird conclusion, but would you expect anything else from a weird movie? I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it so you don't have to! I like your boobs.